Hello, welcome to our channel. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for coming. We, uh, we can't thank you enough for being here. The smartest, most active audience on the planet. Um, massive, why are there so many massive bank layoffs around the country right now? We call them, or they call them, Bank of America calls them silent layoffs. They're quietly discharging these people. Silent layoffs. Silent layoffs. Five people here, ten people there, thirty people there. That branch closes, that branch closes, that branch closes. It's happening all over the country. The silent layoffs. First of all, there will be no debt jubilee. When the dollar falls, you're still going to be liable for all that debt, except food costs and housing costs and everything else costs are going up. The bricks are formed. 30% of the $20 trillion in world trade is now done outside the dollar. By the end of December, it should be 50%. That our, those dollars are flooding back in here and their prices are going up. The average person owes $8,674 in credit card debt. Total average consumer debt is $104,000 between mortgages and auto loans, etc., etc., etc. This company has settled over $275 million in debt to help people Debt, get debt free in an average of 28 months. You call them, you have a lot of credit card debt, a lot of the credit cards will reduce the amount that you owe. They will negotiate. That's correct. So go there, you go there, you talk to them, no debt with mount. Just go to no debt with mount.com. The link will be below. We love the idea that you can get out of debt. You know, if you own a home and you're in debt with credit cards, that bankruptcy, you really don't have an option. You've got to call No Debt with Mount. And then, for God's sakes, curb your credit card spending. I know it's hard. Well, you'll have to take them away. Yeah. Daddy, take them away. Anyway, um, there are mass bank layoffs. Now, first, a little bit about, um, about what happened with the sanctions. Russia keeps saying the sanctions are absolutely illegal. And under the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944, <clears throat> where the U.S. dollar became the world standard for trade, and it was backed by gold, <coughs> in 1971 that was violated. <coughs> and then the United States started violating the Bretton Woods Agreement. So, for example, Ambassador Wanton, Wanta, he shorted the Russian ruble made $6.5 trillion by shorting the Russia, Russian ruble and destroying Russia. And then Dick Cheney came in and stole the $6.5 trillion. And he whined and whined. Must be nice to be able to steal $6.5 trillion, right? Wanta was all over the net. He stole $6.5 trillion. So you stole it from Russia and he stole it from you. Just like Sean David Morton stole my money. And then the Securities and Exchange Commission stole his money, and they won't give it back to me. Or him. Or him, because the Securities and Exchange Commission is nothing but a bunch of thieves. Aren't they a U.S., supposed U.S. corporation, Securities and Exchange Commission? Bunch of lying thieves, just like Ambassador Wanta, just like Dick Cheney, just like all our presidents. So the sanctions that are being put on Russia by all the presidents, Obama, Trump, and now Biden, they're, they're all illegal. And by the way, the vote is in 10 days, and you have two choices. And we're not allowed to say the names, but the Miss Fliberty gibbet, that's the symbol of Miss Fliberty gibbet. It's that's called not a propeller. Joy through strength. Now that was the 1933 calling card for the man who started this party. Joy through strength. That was their symbol. Now, it would be in red, except my printer ribbon ran out. Sorry, reality sets in. Joy through strength. For those of you who have relatives who are in Asia, Europe, who are in Africa, who are in North America and South America, which is pretty much the whole world, right? That should scare the uh, Jesus out of you. Because that's her party's symbol. It's been the same symbol since the South fought for slavery in 1861. You know what? You know what this? 
Well, she's not doing well right now. You know There's what? Big the, article came out this morning. Do you know what the salute for the Southern Army was? You know, we salute like this, right? Well, the Southern Army saluted like this. But that was taken out of all the movies because this might offend That's somebody. That's not a good look. <laughs> but that. <laughs> they're spraying something on us. I don't know what they're spraying on us. But anyway, so what's going on with the banks? I'm glad you asked. J.P. Morgan. There are massive bank layoffs. Why? J.P. Morgan closed 159 branches last year. And they're planning to close 39 branches this year. That's not very many compared to last year. Nope. And then Republic Bank that they took over is closing another 21. So as they gobble up these banks, like uh, Umqua, the FBI told our bank, Columbia Bank, they created money out of thin air to buy Umqua Bank. I know, we have a friend who used to work there. And Umqua Bank then absorbed all of Columbia Bank assets. We went from an A-plus rated, our bank went from A-plus to CC, non-investment grade. <clears throat> I think it's standard and poor's. And then they closed a bunch of branches. So when the, the banks consolidate, they close a bunch of branches. So when they bought um, Republic Bank, they closed a bunch of branches. Bank of America is closing 124 this year. No. Oh. I think they closed three times that last year. Wells Fargo, 88 branches closed. Citibank, 240 branches closed. U.S. Bank lost 134 branches, or 132 branches. They just out, U.S. Bank just outright and said it. We just laid 7,000 people off. PNC Bank, 20 branches. NYC Bank, you know the one that Mnuchin and everybody else bailed out? They just lost $280 million this last quarter. How does the bank lose $280 million? You borrow money, you give it to, you borrow $100,000, or you, you create $100,000, you give it to a homeowner, and suddenly you have $100,000 more money than you had yesterday. So bank, so what New York City Bank does is they, they, Create money out of thin air to lend to you, and then they have that in a loan. How do you lose money when you do that, Jane? And then you resell it. So you, let's say you've got a $500,000 loan. You lend it to them. You make a bunch of fees. I don't know, probably in the neighborhood of $10,000 in fees. You, plus, you take that $500,000 loan, sell it to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac for $450,000, and bingo, you just you have four hundred and sixty. dollars thousand dollars in your pocket. Now, how does a bank that does that lose money? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a cash printing machine, right? All they have to do is find somebody to lend money to, and bingo, they create money. You lend a million dollars here, you sell the loan, you bring in about $950,000 in cash well, to your bank. They're not making any money. How can they not make money when they can do that? Well, they must be losing more money than we think. I guess. I tell you what, what's happening is the loans for their commercial real estate are coming due. And they're having to sell million dollar buildings for $50,000 a piece. Remember, this is not the first time we've been through this in history. So, maybe it's because the whole economy is beginning to crash under the weight of National Socialism. Miss Fliberty Gibbet is not exactly. You know her husband owns more BlackRock than anyone else in the world. They own 50% or 15% of all of these banks that are going laying people off. It's her husband that's calling the shots for the laying off of the, all you people. For all the millions of pe you people hitting the streets. Fliberty Gibbet's husband's calling the shots on those. Isn't that interesting? Let me say that again. A home, a guy comes to you and says, I'd like to make a million dollar loan. I work for the government, she works for the government, and we make a fortune. We want a million dollar loan. Bank says, sure. They give you a million dollar loan. The million dollars is created out of thin air. I.e., the amount of money in circulation goes up, so does inflation. So, they might have a $50,000 charge. 
So they give the bank $50,000. Then the bank takes this $50,000, puts it in their pocket, takes the million dollar loan, sells it to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac for $900,000. So they got $50,000 plus $900,000 in their pocket. Bank doesn't carry the loan, carries commercial loans, but they're all insured. So the only way a bank would be forced to sell a million dollar skyscraper for $50,000 is if the bank forces it to do that, i.e. Miss Fliberty Gibbet's husband. So when a bank loses $280 million, it's because it's being forced to lose $280 million. Well, you know that it costs a lot of money just to sit there and hold a building and try to maintain it. Try to maintain it. Oh, God. It costs a ton of money. I'm reading about New York. The only one with an occupancy above 30%, I think, is the Empire State Building. Really? I mean, they're not even making the nut. They can't even pay the mortgage and the utilities on the buildings that they're in, that they own. Because the occupancy rate is so low. The occupancy rate is so low. But you got to heat the whole thing, the whole building. You can't right. just heat this room and that room and that room. you got to heat the whole thing. Got to keep the heating system going on, well, the ventilating the elevators, system. There's the elevators, I mean, everything. And those ventilating systems go from the top of the skyscrapers, HVAC under the building, <clears throat> and into the underground bases. So you got to keep the, the HVAC systems going because somebody's got to pump oxygen into the underground bases. By the way, Will Wilson went down there, and that's the symbol he saw on their shirts. So he was brought into the underground bases. And he said they all where? were. I don't know where he was at the time. His daddy, his daddy was Rockefeller and started the NFL. He was my TV producer for a long time. Boy, did he use some interesting things. Anyway, so let's go on to the retail. What's going on with retail? We all know Neiman Marcus filed for bankruptcy in 2020, right? Yes. Okay. They raised the interest rates. They had to negotiate with higher bonds. They couldn't do it. Nobody would lend them the money. They couldn't pay the higher interest rate bonds. They filed for bankruptcy. They're still operating. And it gone woke. I saw this morning where they... Um, Eliminated they, Christmas. They put out their Christmas catalog. Yeah, their Christmas catalog with all their the specials, you know, holiday giftware, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And I think they've, they've been doing that for like 86 years or something, you know, with their catalog. Now they're Marcus. suddenly broke. And so they took Christmas off the Christmas catalog. They, they took went, the word Christmas off. They went woke yeah. and they've gone broke. They went woke. They started hiring based on affirmative action 20 years ago and they've been losing money ever since. Yep. Because the people are stupid. Anyway, Nordstrom sales are down. Do you know that they have a $675 million loan come due next year and they had to borrow at 8.87%? Since when does a big... Retail company have to borrow at 8.87%, Jane. That's an unreal. This is Nordstrom's. You know, Neiman Marcus, you buy a, a $40 pair of sneakers at Neiman Marcus, and you get a Kmart for $995, right? Well, I like, ne well, Neiman Marcus has some good things. And then Nordstrom, you buy that $40 pair of sneakers for $150. So Nordstrom, now Nordstrom's has some great products. We have some Nordstrom's products. I walked out of there with... What was it? Four pairs of shoes and a pizza for under 100? Or five pairs of shoes. They were having a heck of a sale. And uh, anyway, Nordstrom is a great place to go. Um, but you can roll a bowling ball down the aisles. The upstairs, they finally filled it. But you can roll a bowling ball. And they don't take suggestions. Or they mean when you give them a suggestion. Oh, boy, are they mean. Anyway, they've gone woke. And they're they know-it-alls. Yeah, they are know-it-alls. That's why they're losing so much money. And J.C. Penney's, I stopped at this. I couldn't believe the numbers for J.C. Penney's. When I was a kid, you could go to Sears, you could go to Penny's, you could buy a shotgun, you could buy a stereo, you could buy records, you could buy toys for the kids. And then they started going woke. They eliminated the gun section altogether. No more hunting clothes, no more nothing. Sears still kept their hunting clothes. But to compete, J.C. Penney's put in a Carhartt section. Ooh, ah, uh, are you impressed yet? But Sears hired diversity inclusion first. Nobody even knew how to operate. When I went to Sears the last five years it was here, no one even knew how to put an electric drill into the, and then put the, and then go like that with an electric drill. The people working there couldn't operate an electric drill. Did you know that, Jane? 
They just assigned a warm body to the spot. They didn't care about product knowledge. Nope, can't hire white males who work on their house. Oh. Gotta hire a young kid who's not a white male, and, and they just went belly up. Sears went bankrupt. Nobody even knew the difference between a wood screw and a metal screw, or a wood screw for hardwood and a wood screw for softwood. They don't even know it at Home Depot or Lowe's. They sure do at Ace, though. Oh, boy, those guys are smart. So I went to Penny's, and I said, okay, how, what were your sales when, when the big T was in office? Because it's getting close to the election. We don't want to say, you know, the Fliberty Gibbet's name or the big T. Oh, yeah, we'll get banned. Oh, they're, they've got, the, they've got the, uh, the guys out that are watching us like a hawk. Well, you know, anytime we talk about saving a politician's life, and then they find the thing that was supposed to make the politician leave the planet. And when we talk about what the Lucifer Trust says, they have to eliminate the human race in, what is it, it's uh, 67 days? They have to eliminate us in 67 days so Lucifer can bring his Christ back. Hey, it's in the Lucifer Trust. It's right on the internet. In fact, it's on YouTube. YouTube has this. Anyway, so he looked at penny sales. It was 11 billion in 2020, 2019. I remember pennies was pretty empty in 2019. You know what it was last year? It went from 10.7 trillion of what billion, sales? Total sales. Say it again. Total sales for JC Penny in 2019. That's five years ago, under the big T. Penny sales were 11 billion dollars a year. That's 11. You know what they are now? 1.5 billion. For the last four quarters, and they're down 20%, so it looks like 20, 24 penny sales will be 1 billion. So they've gone from 11 trillion to 1 billion. 11 trillion? Or billion, billion. 11, 11 billion. 11, there's, there's another one. There's, there's 11, 11 billion. There's 11 billion <laughs> to 1 billion. Did you just stick your tongue out? Yeah, that's that's the extra one. Oh, that's the one. You got to use all you got, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got to have fun on this, but the numbers are right, and I was stunned. And I don't, where do you go with this? The Hallmark stores are closing. The grocery stores in the cities are closing. And penny sales are down 91%. 91%. From 11 billion to 1 billion. That's because they've gone woke. And uh, let me tell you, online sales only account for about 5% of total retail sales. So don't tell me. Amazon's going up. Totally government funded. That's totally a government funded organization. When the government pulls the money from Amazon, they'll collapse the next day. Go ahead. I'm not seeing the Amazon truck going up and down the street that much to make up for it. No. Anyway, the economy under this, under the Biden, under B I D E N administration, under the Miss Fliberty gibbet, is collapsing. Socialism dies when you run out of somebody else's money and the BRICS is taking that money away and the system is collapsing. God bless. Thank you very much. And we'll have some exciting news starting Monday morning. Oh boy. Well, we're, good. we're coming to the we're coming to the countdown now. Uh, yeah, it'll be like ten nine eight seven days to election on Monday. I already voted. Yep. We'll see you tomorrow.